This week on Everything You Need to Know, we're going to be talking about Not a Cat. First, Not a Cat as a brand, but we're also going to be talking about motor sailors, which uh, are a whole different breed of sailboat. And we're going to talk about why you might want one and why you might not. And obviously, special guest appearance from my little sailor, Callie, because we are at home doing the online schooling all week since they uh, since we closed the store that I work at I have a lot of free time during the day so we do the online schooling and if you can tell from my tan I've been at Lady K a lot doing boat work so more on that later and I, I got the steering apart for those of you guys who are interested and I got it all figured out I just have to put it back together now but not a cat is a brand and it wasn't actually called not a cat until more recently and while you may think from the name that they build catamarans they don't. Um, the Not a Cat story actually starts in Finland in the 1950s with a man called Penti Siltala. Probably butchering that, Penti Siltala. He started building fiberglass boats, small ones at first. Um, think sailing dinghies kind of thing. And that was in the 1950s, but local sailors in his area recognized his skill and started asking for something a little more from him and his sort of beginner startup kind of boat building company. They wanted a 10 meter cruising boat with a pilot house. Siltala wasn't about to waste silly time coming up with some sort of a cool name for the brand. So he ended up just calling it Siltala Yachts. And he started to build the 33 footer that the other sailors were asking for, a sailboat with a pilot house as requested. The boat, when he finished it was so successful that they built it a 33 footer from 1968 in one variation or another all the way into the 2000s. Got a major refit in 97 and the name was changed to the Nauticat 331. The 33 really hit the nail on the head and the company took off. Cash was flowing in and the demand for bigger versions of the 33 started to follow. This allowed the, the actual brand to start producing a 36 and then a monstrous 44. We should actually pause to talk about the 44 for a minute because it's an important boat. As with all the designs so far, the 44 was a big, heavy, full keel, go anywhere in the world you want to, pilot house motor sailor. And again, motor sailor, we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. It boasted fiberglass hull, beautiful teak decks and teak trim. And because it fit the motor sailor mold, it wasn't a sloop, it was a catch, it was a schooner, or it was a cutter. This 32,000 pound monster could be driven not only from outside in the cockpit like a normal sailboat, but also from indoors in the pilot house, which made it ideal for cruising in any climate that you wanted to sail to. And cruising, you could go. The thing had a 120 horse diesel engine and sported an impressive 285 gallon diesel tank. That's over a thousand liters of diesel. The cruising range of this boat was some 900 nautical miles before it needed a refuel. Lady K Sailing and Everything You Need to Know is brought to you by patrons. These are people who give a couple of bucks an episode to keep this channel improving and to help me invest money in Lady K to get her ship shape for her next adventure. So a big shout out to the latest patrons in the last couple of weeks. Philip, Colleen, Matthew, Garrett, Ron, Clayton, Theo, and Eric. Thank you guys all so much. Welcome to the team. At the beginning of the 1980s, the company did something just about everyone was doing at that time in that era, the early 80s, late 70s, fast net and all that stuff. They needed some newer, bigger designs. So they called on somebody who knew how to do that really, really well. They called on Sparkman and Stevens. And a shout out to s and because they did a great job with my boat. So awesome. So s and drew up some plans for a 40, a 43, and a behemoth 52 footer and as you might expect because it's Sparkman and Stevens drawing these boats They looked different. They weren't of the original Nordic descent look that the original Nautic hats had and Sort of as you'd expect from s and what they were doing in the early 80s was a lot of offshore racing and, and huge international race boat sort of things IOR and all the other things so when they started drawing boats for Nautic hat they looked a lot more like conventional sailboats and they even went so far as to make the pilot houses a little bit lower, reduce windage and all that kind of stuff. 
And that was sort of where Sparkman and Stevens were at the time. So the Not A Cat line actually got a little bit faster, which was inevitable given who was drawing them. The Not A Cat story continues after that with a lot of more successful and very desirable boats um, from different designers. But I'd like to shift right now to sort of the elephant in the brand. Why motor sailors? Why did why not make traditional sloops? I mean, everybody else was doing that and it was working really well, but Not A Cat didn't. They made big, heavy, full keel, monstrous motor sailors. First, what is a motor sailor? And it's fairly simply, it's a sailboat designed to run under a smaller sail plan, usually with more than one mast, not a sloop, and the mast will be a lot shorter than normal sailboat mast, while also running a big, powerful engine. The idea is the smaller sail plan is much easier to handle with a small crew and the big powerful engine assists the sails and the boat can make can be very very heavy because they have all that extra horsepower so it can be very very accommodating a heavy and easy to sail motor sailor really lends itself well to perhaps an older retired couple who want to sail the caribbean and beyond in relative comfort and ease of use but because they can support a lot more weight, they get the benefit of a pilot house where the helmsman can sit in a comfortable chair for hours and hours and hours, regardless of the weather. And because you have a very large diesel engine running, producing electricity, it's not uncommon for that pilot house to have air conditioning or heat. Imagine having a big, roomy, comfortable trawler that has all the comfort of that our old retired couple would want that can also be sailed with no engine running if you wanted to. The downside to the reduced sail plan is of course a slower sailing boat, but if you run the engine and the sails, you get a really, really fuel efficient trawler essentially. The motor sailor truly is a couple of things. One is it's the best of both worlds between a cruising boat and a trawler. With that best of both world approach though, you get the worst of both worlds. A small sail plan means you still have to manage sails, so you're still getting that problem. You still have to maintain the rigging, maintain the sails. But because it's also a big diesel-driven boat, means you're doing oil changes and engine maintenance and mechanical issues. You have to worry about everything that a trawler does and a sailboat does, but you get to sail, which is more efficient, and you get the big engine. So it's all kind of, is it worth it? Um, I've run with several motor sailors. I've toured a lot of the motor sailors in my travels and I've done, you know, a thousand miles beside a motor sailor. They tend to be massive and roomy and comfortable. They have engine rooms you can actually go inside, even on like a 30 footer, which is amazing. And they'll keep up with just about any sailboat I could imagine. If you want to do eight knots all day, it'll do eight knots right beside you. It's not a bad deal. So would you want one? And I think that comes down to the person that you are or our retired couple we talked about earlier. You could get a trawler. If you don't want to or can't manage a sail plan and the lines and everything that's going on um, and reduce sail when the wind picks up and put sails up and take sails down, if you just can't manage that, a trawler makes a lot more sense. But if you can manage it just in a smaller sail plan, but you still want the ability to have the big engine and the electricity and the heat and the AC, but a little more efficiency because you also have sales. It's sort of a niche market for people that would want a motor sailor. I think the big plus for me, and I've done a lot of miles in the rain through two hurricanes, like the huge plus for me is that these are pilot house boats. So if you're sitting outside and it's nice, you drive from outside. If things kind of get rainy and stuff, you just walk inside and grab the other steering wheel. It's really that easy. Flip on the air conditioning and you can do 16 hour days really comfortably. Put a TV on, do your thing, no problem. So I absolutely love the idea of a pilot house, even though it has drawbacks. So guys, a quick update. I'm actually gonna take the camera out today and I'm gonna get some footage for next week's episode, probably for this Friday. Um, I got the steering apart on Lady K. I actually ran a spin halyard. I got the mast up, ran the spin halyard to the dock in front of the boat, gave it a couple wraps on the, the mast winch and got the boat to lean forward. And I'm like eight inches out of the water as far as where my steering needs to be taken apart. Big pipe wrench. Thank you to everybody at the club who helped. Um, and we got the steering taken apart and got the flax dug out of it, the flax cord or uh, the, the stuffing box material. Got it dug out. It was seized to the rudder post. And I'm gonna show you this in a video so it's all gonna make sense to you. 
I want to say a big thank you to everybody who commented on the last video where I was asking for help and people to explain to me how this thing works because I had to put the boat in the water. I didn't have a choice. Where, I, where I'm at in the club I'm in, we hire a crane and the crane comes and every boat goes in all in one day. So it would have been a massive headache to not put it in the water. And it, if I didn't put it in, it would not have gone in this year at all. So I'm glad I put it in and I'm glad I was able to use the spin halyard to get the stern out of the water a little bit. Everything looks good. I've got some flax stuffing box material. It's just a matter of going there and dealing with the, the actual seized on problem because the bottom of the stuffing box is still being problematic. I got it to turn with a pipe wrench, but not freely. So um, soaking it in penetrating oil over the course of a few days, um, I may heat it up with a little propane torch. I will show you guys all next Friday. So I'll see you then. Love you guys. Stay safe.